This tutorial will take you through the basic steps of initializing your QCI controller. We will then illustrate examples to expand your program. You can then check out the complete tutorial series offered by Quicksilver Controls. Start with your hardware connected and powered off. Open Quick Control. If your communication port has not been enabled, and this is true for any first-time user, Quick Control will prompt you to enable the COM port and initialize your servo motor. We'll now set up the communications port. Click Setup under the Toolbars menu, click COM port, click Modify, and select the desired COM port under the COM port drop-down list. You will want to set up the default baud rate and protocol. The baud rate default is 57,600, an 8-bit ASCII, two stop bits, no parity for protocol default. Click OK and then verify the Enable checkbox is selected and press OK. We will now initialize our device. From the Tools menu, we will launch the initialization wizard. Click on Open to select the appropriate initialization file for your application and hardware. For this tutorial, we will be using factory initialization. Select the file, click Open, now enter the motor cable length in feet. This can be found on the last two digits of the cable part number. If your motor is directly connected to a controller, enter 1 for cable length. I'm using a 4-foot cable, so I'll leave 4 as the cable length. Now click Download File to Device to initialize the servo motor using factory defaults. The unknown device wizard will pop up. Power down your controller and click Next. Now power up and verify the red COM light on the controller is flashing. If it is, then click Next. Select the serial interface. I'm using RS-232. Click Next and a window confirming the device setup will appear. Click Finish. A message will appear when the download is complete. Press OK to acknowledge that message. We can now exit the initialization wizard and initialization is complete. Now open the control panel from the tools menu. To verify the motor and controller are operational, click and drag the purple slider up and down to produce counterclockwise and clockwise motions. The speed scale box just above the slider may be changed to allow for faster motions. The move command may also be used to test a particular motion. We'll now create and run our first program. We'll create a new program that causes the servo to move 8,000 encoder counts. When it powers up, you should be polling and have the device in the right panel enable you to see the position of the motor. If your status is not green, press Scan Network on the device status monitor. Create a new program by selecting the New Program file from the File menu, and your screen should look like this. We'll add a move relative time base command to the user program. To add a command, go to Programs in the toolbar menu and select Add Line. The Select Line dialog box will appear. Select the Move tab, double click on MRT, and Edit the Move box will appear. Edit the move date at 8,000 counts and 100 millisecond ramp time in one second. Press Test to preview the motion. Press OK to add this command to your program. Under the Program Info toolbar on the left of your screen, press Download and Restart. Quick Control will download your program to the servo's non-volatile memory. It will then restart the controller and go 8,000 counts in one second. 
You can press Restart to cause the program to execute this move every time the servo powers up. Select Save As from the File menu to name and save your program. Congratulations, you're now a programmer. We will now stop a move using digital input. If you do not have a physical switch, you can simulate one using the I.O. on the control panel. Open the control panel on the lower right hand corner of the screen. There will be an indicator for each of the I.O. bits on the controller. Clicking on the I.O. will set it to a tri-state. Holding the shift button and clicking the I.O. button will set the I.O. high. Holding the control key and clicking the I.O. will clear the I.O. low. Instructions are next to the indicators to help to remind you. Double click on the existing MRT command in your program. Press the stop condition button on the edit box when it pops up. Select the standard tab. Select the I.O. 1 condition in low fall state. This selection will cause your move to stop when I.O. 1 is low. Press OK to save and exit the Edit Move dialog box. Set I.O. High and click Download and Restart button on the Program Info toolbar. Verify the move stops when I.O. 1 goes high. Press Restart and verify the program runs again. We will now add a command that will cause the servo to wait until I.O. 5 is low before executing our move. With the MRT command selected or highlighted, press the Insert button on the top left of the screen. To insert a line above the selected line, in this case above line 2, pressing Add a line will add a line below the selected line. The Select a Line dialog box will appear. Select the Flow tab, double click on WBS Wait on Bit State command. This command will cause the servo to wait at the program line and conditions are met. Select IO5 condition and low fall state, press OK to add this command to your program, and set IO5 high. Click Download and Restart to run your program. The servo does not move until I.O. 5 goes low and will stop early if I.O. 1 goes low. We'll now add a command that will repeat the program indefinitely. With the MRT command selected or highlighted, click the Add button, select the Flow tab, select the Jump command, and in the Jump Command Label field, enter the word Start. Press OK to exit the Edit the Jump Command dialog box. We've just added a command to jump to the program line with the label Start. Add this label to line number 2 by clicking the Line 2 Label cell and type Start. The jump command will now loop to line 2 after it finishes a move. With both the IO1 and IO5 high, download and restart the program. Verify the motor does not spin until IO1 goes low. Save the program under the name of your choice. The controller has now been initialized and you have begun adding commands to your program. We hope that you found this tutorial helpful. The full tutorial series can be found at quicksilvercontrols.com slash videotutorials.html. For more information and resources, go to quicksilvercontrols.com. Thank you.